Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all doing very, very well. Simulation for the Nation here, and you join me back on the Mega Farm, where today we are rushing against the weather, and we're about to lose out. It is the last day of autumn, day nine. We are cracking along with uh, the very last bit of uh, groundwork that we can do. Uh, we had to wait to get some of our spring crops in until the early hours of this morning. We were able to get those finished up there, so... Uh, lots missing and which means that we've we've had a lot of work to catch up on today we have been plowing we've been drilling uh we've been spreading lime and we have been spreading a bit of muck there as well uh, along with kind of keeping all of our uh, our stock on on top of things as well livestock need to be fed up there uh, but we're looking good we are we've got drew drew out at the moment he is currently just cracking on with the last of the uh we've got two fields of field grass we're gonna try and mush into the ground even though it's raining see how that goes uh i'm gonna bring up the map here and show you what kind of what it looks like at the moment uh farm two have been cracking along as well they're still working as you can see looking like they're getting some drilling done down there as well uh but we have been we're trying to put everything into winter cropping as we can at the moment reason being we've we're having some bad luck with our spring drilling uh the temperatures here at Challenton they don't get very warm and the soil temperature doesn't warm up until the last few days of spring which really pushes your winter your spring crop harvest back into the final few days of autumn there which is a bit touch and go this year we've had some really um really dodgy weather really which has just limited what we can actually get done uh so we haven't got uh the, i'd rather have more in the winter which means we've got all summer to kind of get it into the stores there so that's what we'll be looking into uh we did one thing i will show you before we go any further uh is we've got our maize done now our maize harvest was a bumper bumper harvest we did one and a half fields as I just do some rather risky reversing here, Sim. That's the ticket. Where am I going? There's my gateway. Hashtag realism right there, folks. Uh, we are going to go A and 2 here. Uh, because I want to show you our pit. Uh, it's yet to be compacted down and, and fully siled over. At least I hadn't last time I saw it. But this is one and a half fields. And that is it. That is a little bit over uh, 750,000 liters. Can you believe it? Uh, so we need to just finish off with that one. But it's in the pit there at least. We'll get that wrapped up as soon as we can. We just need to get these crops into the ground. Uh, so we are looking great for silage. Uh, the animals are looking good on the whole there, really. Uh, carving has just started once again. So got a couple dripping in there through now. So we should see a few more of those arriving there. We are waiting to sell a, a boatload of milk as well because we're starting to get into selling season. Winter's always got uh, a great range of prices uh, for all of our crops and products, really. There. So we'll be looking to kind of capitalize on that where we can. Uh, and really, you know, start to get that revenue back up after our last uh, foray into the shopping spree with all the tractors there. We, we're doing all right, so we're still keeping a good uh, operating budget there. But more is always more, as I like to say. And if we can get some more and really get us back up towards that million, we've got designs and a few uh, other expenditures. Uh, we put three fields of cover crop in. They are going to be drilled in the spring there. We're not going completely off the spring crop in there, but we're going to have a little bit in there for some sugar beet next year. We can't drill that now anyway. So we'll put some in there. We're going to put a field or two into sugar beet. Uh, and then the rest of it, yeah, we'll we'll put some spring barley in probably. But most of our crops are in the ground. Uh, we're going to just check in on Drew, Drew quickly, who is uh, should be just in field three here. He's actually now put some field grass in, which we're doing all right with field grass. We don't have to worry about really temperature wise there. It's looking OK. It's a grass. It's a hardy crop. It'll be fine. Um, and we're just going to stop here. Field two right in front of us actually is going to be one of our sugar beet fields. Not too big, but we put a cover crop in there just to kind of fix the nitrogen up a little bit. See how it looks there. And as you can see, Drew is out there in his Fent 820 with the John Deere uh, 750 on the back and making some good progress. If I bring up, I just plowed this one over before. Uh, so we, um, we're going to go and check out the mega uh, machine I was using for that, but yeah, he's going to make some great progress there. Uh, as I come through into what has been uh, planted, we've just got this field, we've got field seven, which was one of the other maize fields. Seven and three were our two maize fields there. Uh, we actually took half a field seven off uh, with a combine uh, uh, for grain, and we still did pretty well for that as well. So it's been a bumper bumper harvest for us. It really, really has, which is more than you can say for field 122 and 16, which are now into linseed. But oh, my God, the soybeans were disastrous once again. Really questions how much, you know, how much time and resources we need to put into that because we do need it for tmr but is it not just worth buying it in at this stage because god it's been terrible uh it really has been a, a poor show so we'll, we'll try it one more year though. we're going to commit to it uh we'll see how it goes but um yeah maybe questions will be asked uh but as you can see it is still raining it's supposed to snow later on as well as we get into winter which is going to be a real pain so we'll probably get this field done and maybe one more if we can manage to stretch to it but it's going to be it's going to be a bit tight uh so we'll see how that one looks but uh yeah we're drew's cracking along anyway which is good 
we let him get that done and dusted there. I've got a bit of fuel in the back of my pickup because the I'm in defense. Uh, my 936 there has been pulling the plow and doing a lot of few, uh, a lot of jobs today. So probably going to need just a little bit of a top up there. A little bit of a drink before we get cracking along once again. But yeah, it has been rather busy. Uh, farm 2 have been pushing along, like I say there as well. They're in a good spot. We we actually did a little bit of a harvest uh, swap because we were both in tricky situations with the... Uh, and a bit of a tight bind there, really. So we uh, we have two John Deere 5610s. Uh, or 560i, I beg your pardon. I think that's the correct phrase. Uh, we've got two of those uh, combines, and they needed some drastic help. I think they were trying to harvest their big field of soybeans, which was uh, in either 92 or 87, one of those. Uh, and we needed a forager for our maize. So we, we swapped. They have a John Deere 9900i, can you believe? Uh, so we, 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 we borrowed, we swapped machines and we cracked on and got it all done there, which is uh, really, really great to see. So a little bit of uh, two rivals joining forces for the greater good, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was nice to see that we got it done. Beautiful harvest at the drive. It just couldn't get fast into, because of, I think the yield of the crop there, what was this using? Precision farming. And also I think it was partly to do with the, uh, uh, partly to do with the combine extension as well. Couldn't get above two miles an hour on the on the maize crop, which was pretty torturous. But then when we brought the combine in with the eight meter uh, capello head there, that couldn't get above four miles an hour. So I think it was definitely the, the crop itself. But yeah, we did very well off that, needless to say. Uh, so what we're going to do is just park up about here, I hope. I should just about do it. Where is the... What we might do, actually, because I think it's probably going to work a little bit better if I just come this way. and park with if it's anything like the the service trailer i might just need to park the uh hose on this side i think that'll kind of work for us look at the, the plow though the the metal wear on this plow right now is incredible it's absolutely beautiful there this is the first season we've had it the first spring that we've had it even so it's it's put some work in already uh it's a, a lot of people don't like it they say it's a, it's a bit awkward to handle that it just it's a bit of a knack really it's an art to using it uh i am going however to to field seven uh which is a tricky one to get into uh if fyi if you haven't done so uh and you're thinking of putting some maize into a field don't do field seven because if you cut all out there it is an awfully tight entrance to get in and out of uh but anyway let's just jump on into the 936 here okay and we're probably just gonna i can't get that to refill for some reason so what we'll do is just leave it really we've got half a tank we're not gonna go far we'll, we'll worry about that later on uh, i'm just gonna leave this all here let's turn that guy off there you go uh and let's just jump on into the safety of the fence here as you can see this rain it's gonna be a little bit greasy for us to go over there but hey it's only just started to rain so we're still good enough to get drilling uh and we, yeah we need as must really so let's crack on into the mighty fence here which is already at nearly th well 13 and a half hours already so that's pretty cool uh we're really cracking along put some good hours onto this today I uh, love this track. I love this setup, actually. It's really, really nice. And away we go. Absolutely pairs with this here. Plow on the back. It really does. Now, the field that we're going through, like, say, field seven, an absolute pain to get into. Uh, and really not that big. So, you know, smart money would be to use one of the smaller plows. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to get stuck into it and see what that looks like so it should be all right uh but we'll get it done and then once it's all done out the way we can uh get this plow serviced up put it away for the winter and then we'll be looking onto our winter jobs which this year pre pretty much looking like uh we've got a lot of silage that we've got one pit of silage that we're going to be selling up there uh, as per our kind of server rules we can only serve, uh, sell one pit per farm we've got some muck to keep an eye on there and keep the cattle healthy there we'll about maybe hopefully uh, well, by the end of wintering game here some of our beef cattle will be ready to go they're starting to pile on the weight there now which is good finishing off quite nicely indeed there so that's really a great opportunity for the farm there for sure so we'll look to try and capitalize on that one uh and then yeah we'll, we'll have a look see what the farm revenue is looking like we've got lots to sell we've got about 250 tons of barley in the shed we've got some maize or some corn in there as well and a whole load of other cereal crops to get cracking along with there too uh now, let me just see if I can get into here. The last time I did this was with silage trailers, which were a little bit more agile than this hulking big beast of a thing. So we might just need to uh, trample on a little more crop here. There you go. Let's get that going in the right direction at the very least there. And then we'll just sneak our way in here like no one ever noticed. 
No one ever noticed a probably what 15 ton tractor in an 8 for a reversible plow come through a field. Not at all. We're fine. We're fine. There we go. So I hope everything is all going well. Thank you all for watching and tuning in here as we continue with the uh, the daddy server on the mega farm. Uh, both farms are really starting to kick on actually. They really are. I know farm 2 are really building up and focusing on their uh, livestock herd. So they have more dairy cattle than us right now. So they should really start to see the benefits coming in of that. Uh, farm 1, like I say here, we do have a lot of, lot of crops in the ground right now. We're, we're limiting how much grass next year because we have so much uh, forage. We're not going to be doing any maize at all. We don't need to. We've got about nearly a million liters at the moment. Uh, so we won't be doing any more uh, forage there. We have plenty of grassland at the moment to get uh, to fill a pit once we are ready to go with that as well. Uh, so we'll see how that one looks. So yeah, we're looking really good, really happy with it at the moment there. I think the next project will be to look into in investing more into our dairy here to see how many more we can increase. Uh, because that's always a good thing to do. Uh, so yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah, just look at this beast. Uh, now, as I mentioned, this field is an odd shaped field. Uh, so we've got a bit of a dog leg in the top corner there, which is never fun. But we'll probably start going off a straight edge, which is down at this end here. Which is why we kind of shut that gate there, so... Uh, usually I would look into using GPS there, and I'm not really sure it's going to be worth it for, for this small drag. But we'll get a start on it anyway here. Uh, let's see how we can fold this down and out. Probably going to go to the that side there, which it always does. So we'll just uh, fold that straight over. I love the wear on the mold boards, though. That's fantastic to see. It really does look a treat. And now what we're going to do is just get started right in the corner here. Just going to do a full pulls out there just so we have that, that done and dusted. There you go. That's looking good there. Lower that down. Pull it straight out there. Happy days. The one thing I wish this plow had was legs on the front to stand it up with. So when you're in the transport position, you can just leave it like that and park up in the corner rather than having to fold it down like this. Which is a, a little unfortunate there, but yeah, it is a beautiful plow. Really covers some acres. I can travel with this tractor. I can travel along about 11 miles an hour with it there. Get some r serious ground covered. Uh, so what we'll do is put that down there. And try not to scratch off too much of the paint as we come through this first pass here. So we'll just keep it a little bit wide there. Now, as you'll see, we'll jump on into our uh, soil composition here. The two fields that were uh, both in maize were seven and three. They both needed plowing over here. So we're going to rattle that one out nice and quickly there. That's pretty much all the land that we own that requires it right now. So we do do, we've been doing a great job of keeping on top of all of that. Uh, and we'll continue to do that as well. This had muck spreading earlier. Lime wise, uh, the pH levels of the soil is pretty good right now. So we won't be worrying about that too much uh, to come. Uh, certainly not this year. Probably back onto that next year though. Uh, but yeah, there we go. And then what we'll probably do is uh, get as close to the edge as we can here. Just to get buttoned right up. Oh, that's nearly going through the hedge. Excellent stuff. And then the one thing is, yeah, this is a, not a very big field here, but it does still take quite a, a, a turn in radius to get around. I can't really avoid that. But yeah, like I say, flying through the ground here today, which is fantastic. It's really what I wanted to see. So we'll just take it nice and wide. Swing on in here, and then we're good. Lift that up there a bit. We need to get right on into that corner a little bit more. Back we go. There you go. That's a good angle to hit that. Like I say, people find it a little bit difficult and tricky sometimes to steer one of these things. You've just got to kind of... It's a, it's a knack of getting used to how it, ha how it handles. That's all it is. And then getting into a habit of a, a turn. Because uh, once you're in that habit there, it's easy. You, you, you can't go wrong with it. We're just going to pull that out from the edge there a little bit. It gives us a bit more breathing room. So we'll run out. We'll try and do one more of those as well. And look over just a little bit more. And that will give me just a, a little bit of room there to uh, to uh, get the headlands all buttoned up as well. So that should be good. There we go. And then we're away to the races. 
hopefully we'll get it all done and there's only one field left i think drew's off after he's finished that field so we'll have to try and get that one done uh before the snow arrives which evidently is going to be very shortly unfortunately uh but hey that's winter for us if not you know worst case scenario it's ready to roll uh it's plowed over ready to roll for the spring we'll just have to um swallow that when we come to it really but yeah otherwise we're looking all right flying along 936 looks like it's getting a bit of a wash down there as well which is you always love to see that really really do uh like i say we probably won't worry too much about gps in this little field by the time i get it all lined up and done you know this field's gonna be pretty much all taken care of here really i think uh so yeah that's kind of where we are we're rushing along to get this all finished up with today uh should be all done and dusted uh let's just show you what we're looking like uh very quickly from an animal standpoint here uh come on to our livestock we are currently 240 head of dairy cattle 200 sheep 212 lambs uh which will be continuing to keep hold of as well there and then 121 beef cattle as well now that number i want to increase get that bumped up uh so we'll see how that's looking but you can see we're starting to get some uh they're getting a little bit older there, so we're getting some weight onto them now we want to see this number get to about 1600 pounds uh and then we'll be good to go so plenty more to run out there uh and we'll see how it's all looking but yeah the main thing is when we look at like our dairy cattle a lot of milk there that milk number's flying up at the moment so we'll we'll hopefully see that continue where we can then uh yeah capitalize on that really uh over the course of the next few days of winter we will be looking to sell as much as we can that's the best time that's the best prices we can get locked in with so we'll be doing it really we're gonna get that one pick cleaned up and then we'll see how we're looking by the time we have our next uh, video we should be in a completely different position now and i can't wait to see it uh, I'm going to continue with this field though, get us all done and dusted as we take this li nice little figure of eight to get back around. Uh, if you would like to join us on this series, you can do that. You just need to be a dedicated member. You can do so by uh, hitting that join button. Uh, once you do so, follow the instructions there, message me on Discord, and we'll get you all sorted out as quickly as possible. Uh, we have about 50 members at the moment there, without whom my uh, channels just wouldn't be able to function as it does. So thank you everyone for your continued support. Uh, for now, we're going to leave it here. So thank you ever so much. I have been Simulation for the Nation. I do hope you have enjoyed from a very wet and dismal last day of autumn on Challenton Valley. We will see you all in the next one. Until then, do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing, and we'll see you later.